Hi, today we are going to see brake test on DC shunt motor. In this, the aim is to perform brake test on a given DC shunt motor and obtain the performance characteristics of the motor from the test observations. Here, the components required is ammeter, voltmeter, rheostat, and tachometer. So, ammeter, if you see here, MC, MC means moving coil. If you take an analog meter, Okay, there will be MI and MC meters. MC meters are used for DC supply. So, this in this MC meters, if you observe under A, there will be a line. Okay, so by this we can say this is a MC meter. Okay, if there is no line, then it is a MI meter. So, uh, here instead of using this, I am having distal meters. So, I am using these distal meters instead of connecting this ammeter. And next thing is tachometer. The tachometer it is used to measure the speed. So, how you have to use is see, do not press the memory button, keep this button in RPM mode and press the left side button continuously. And by keeping this in the along with the shaft, okay, we have to put along with the shaft, and while it is rotating, automatically it will show the speed of the motor okay so instead of using this we are having sensor here so it will show the speed of the motor so i am not using this so automatically it will show the speed now uh, so these are the equipments uh, voltmeter of 0 to uh, 500 volts and ammeter of 0 to 20 amps and uh, uh, for field 0 to 2 amps and to measure speed we are using rpm meter so coming to the connections okay here while giving connections, uh, if you observe the, if you observe carefully from positive, so that means already the entire thing is connected inside. Okay, this uh, DPS switch uh, uh, fuses and everything got connected. So all we have to connect is from this point. So from this point, if you observe, two wires are required. One is for ammeter and another is for voltmeter. Already I have connected two wires here. So this one, one I am connecting to the ammeter positive. Okay, and another wire I have to connect to the voltmeter positive. So another wire I have taken and I have connected to the voltmeter positive. After connecting voltmeter positive, so now I have completed these two wires. After that, from ammeter negative to L, see LZ is a LZA or LAF. We can call Z or F. So if you observe carefully. You can see L, A, Z, okay, Z or F, we can call this one as field or Z. So, here from ammeter negative to L connection should be there. So, from ammeter negative to L connection. So, I am taking one more wire. Generally, red wires are used for giving positive connections and black wires are used for giving negative connections. So, from here to L, see here, from ammeter negative to L. So, I am connecting from ammeter negative to L. Okay, now I have completed this wire also. Next coming to the A. First, I am, I am going to connect A after the Z. So, A. So, from this point, from A, I have to connect to the motor A point. So, I am taking a, one more wire. I am taking from A to motor A connection and giving to the motor and so now I have connected this one also. Next thing is from AA to negative terminal. So already I have taken black four three black wires. So in that one thing I have connected to AA. So now from AA to negative I have connected. Next. Uh, Coming to now, now coming to the voltmeter negative. I have to connect this one. So from negative terminal to voltmeter negative. So I am taking one more wire and I am connecting to the negative side of the voltmeter. Next, one more black wire is required for ZZ connection. So I will come from top to the bottom. So from Z, Z or F means the same, right? So A to from Z to rheostat. If you observe rheostat, there are three terminals, one point, two point and three point. Here, 
leave this third point because it was left empty okay it was left like that so we have to connect only this point and this point so from z to rheostat so see from f f anna z anna okate so from f to rheostat this point we have to connect to this point so i have connected from this point to this point next arrow mark is there no that arrow mark indicates this point so from this arrow mark okay we have to connect to z of the field so from this arrow mark i am connecting to the z and the last one which was left is from z z to negative already have taken three wires here so the last wire i am connecting to z z right so these are the connections and first of all take out all the wires because i have to operate this one we should operate this one very carefully okay this is called rheostat okay now coming to the operation before operation we will see the name plate details okay here if you observe in the motor in the motor these are said to be name plate details these are said to be name plate details here it is difficult to see so that same thing we have taken as a board in that the main thing we need to see is armature amperes what is armature ampere how much value is there 20 amps armature amperes is 20 amps so we have to consider that one and what is the maximum speed 1500 rpm so we should not go more than 1500 rpm and we should not go more than 20 amperes okay now coming to the precautions avoid loose connections first precaution is avoid loose connection all the connections should be given uh, proper tight connections after that after that uh, next there should not be any load at the time of starting see the belt it is very low it is very loose very loose so it should be free there should not be any load at the time of starting this is the second precaution and the fourth precaution is pour water in the drum so here for making the drum this is called drum and here we have to pour water such that it won't uh, the drum won't get heated up when it is loaded so pour water in the drum these are the main three precautions and also the last precaution is keep the rheostat in minimum position minimum position means resistance should be minimum that means whatever current is coming here that entire current has to flow directly to this point so resistance should be kept in minimum position so keep the point in starting position clear these are the precautions next procedure now i'm switching on the supply now switch on dpsc switch now i am switching on dpsc switch this is the first step so once i have switched on you can see the voltage okay the voltage is 220 volts dc supply so uh, after switching on then pressure should be there slow movement should be there so switch on three point starter like that you have to put pressure and you have to move slowly after moving three point starter so pressure should be there and movement should be there after moving three point starter the motor starts rotating now check the speed now check the speed the speed is 1400 rpm so how much i need i need 1500 rpm so adjust the field rheostat see while adjust, while using rheostat you should be very careful you have to close all three fingers and hold this gray color and this black color because everything will get shocked so we have to hold like this very carefully and move this slowly such that the motor speed is going to increase to 1500 so slowly we have to increase the speed then the motor runs at rated speed okay now the motor is running at rated speed after seeing the motor runs at rated speed then take down the corresponding readings so here if you observe carefully these readings are said to be no load readings these readings are said to be no load readings in this no load readings 
see first of all first one is input voltage second one is load current this is this okay and third one is uh, uh, if field current no not required and uh, next one is speed speed in rpm next s1 and s2 uh, values you have to take so here we have taken no load readings after taking the no load readings now apply the load gradually here applying means by tightening the squirrels so here we are tightening the squirrels by seeing the ammeter over there now the ammeter value is one point change right now i am going to tighten up to 3 amps so see now i am tightening this up to 3 amps so you have to observe the current continuously and you have to tighten this squirrels so now i am applying the load up to 3 amps see now the current is 3 amperes so after getting 3 amperes take down the corresponding readings so you have to take down the v value i value and uh, speed uh, see as the load increases the speed got decreased 1483 and s1 value and s2 value s1 and s2 value are in kgs so it is in zero so s1 is zero and s2 it is going up to 2 kgs now again apply load apply load to 5 amperes apply load to 5 amperes now it is of 5 amperes now again take v value i value speed speed got reduced to 1459 after that s1 value is 3 kgs s2 value is almost 7 kgs now like that you have to take the corresponding reading after taking the corresponding like that you have to continue it should not go more than rated current what is the rated current here 20 ampere so you should not apply more than 20 amperes so by observing this you have to take at least 4 to 5 readings now after finishing that reduce the load reduce the load and now switch off the dpsc switch after reducing this after reducing this switch off the dpsc switch then it will follow okay automatically the starter will up, uh, automatically switch it off right after that coming to the calculations part here if you observe uh, voltage we have taken current we have taken tarvata uh, we have taken uh, speed in rpm and s1 s2 are in kgs right so after that you have to find out the torque value in torque value the formula is 9.81 into s into r where s is the difference between s1 and s2 where whichever value is higher that value minus lower value so that value should be written in s and next r is the radius of the drum here if you observe carefully this is called drum okay and you have to take the circumference okay you have to take the circumference 2 pi r equal to circumference value in centimeters after that find out the r value okay r equal to that value by 2 pi after getting that convert into meters and that meters is said to be uh, radius value so here the radius value is 0.105 meters right mm, uh, so like that you are going to get torque value after getting torque value next input power input power here we are giving uh, electrical supply so the input power is v into i so vl into il so uh, by uh, by taking this product you are going to get input power after that output power here if you observe we are getting output power in terms of mechanical the motor is running right output power is in mechanical so mechanical output power formula is 2 p equal to 2 pi nt by 60 where n is the speed in rpm n is the speed in rpm and t already we have found out Uh, torque value so uh, that value you have to take so like that you are going to get output power after that efficiency efficiency means output power by input power so if you put these values you are going to get the efficiency and the efficiency will not go more than uh, 85% okay so uh, output power by input power into 100 sa you are going to get the 
efficiency like that you have to take down the readings after that you have to plot the graph while plotting while draw, uh, plotting the graph so you have to plot two graphs one graph is uh, torque versus speed so you have to take uh, speed in y axis and uh, torque in x axis and you have to plot the graph and the graph will be coming like this right and next you have to plot one more graph uh, to show the performance characteristics uh, so uh, in x axis you are going to take output power and in y axis you can take efficiency speed torque and load current il so like that you have to write the readings and whatever here actually we need four graphs but we are doing in one graph so how we have to plot it uh, you have to listen it very carefully so here whatever value suppose say you are taking the efficiency value versus output power then think that these values are at this point okay at this point and plot the graph from these points only because for this one the initial value is zero for this one the initial value is zero so whatever graphs you are drawing you have to draw only from this y axis only you should not draw from here then the value will get changed uh, will get uh, you, you won't get uh, proper values like that you have to plot all the graphs and if, uh, for every graph at the last you have to indicate what type of uh, 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 graph you have taken right thank you very much this is how you have to continue